All right. Anyone who knows me knows I hate pop filters. They're annoying. They get in the way. Sometimes they negatively affect the audio. They never offer to pay for dinner. Point is, you can get rid of your pop filter just like I did and look at life through a new filter. Filter of happiness. A filter without your old glorified spit guard coming back into your life just to stir up drama. Come with me on a journey that ends with freedom. All right, but really, I hate pop filters, and in other previous videos, I talked about how I don't like them and how I don't use them, and there were a lot of people asking in the comments how I got away with not using them and could I make a video all about it, so here we are. Okay, so before I go into how you can get rid of your pop filter altogether just by using proper microphone technique, as if you hadn't figured that out by now, I'm going to talk about some of the negative effects that pop filters can cause. So for those of you who don't know what a pop filter is or what it does, it just stops large gusts of air from getting into the microphone from words such as plosives, for example. Plosives. If I say the word plosive right into the microphone, plosive, it's going to cause a large gust of air to go right into the microphone. It doesn't sound very good. Uh, it's jarring to the listener. And so people will use pop filters to try to eliminate some of that air from getting into the microphone when they say words like, you know, that start with a P, like plosive. So one of the reasons I don't like pop filters is they can negatively affect the audio. They can color the way the audio sounds. Sometimes they can make the audio sound kind of muffled, especially the kind of pop filters that are like sleeves that would go onto a shotgun microphone. You would just take the whole sleeve and slide it over the entire microphone and I it just, it causes the audio to sound kind of muffled, which you can use to your advantage if you have a sibilance issue. Doing this can actually cause the microphone to, you know, it'll sound a little muffled, but it can sound a little darker and it can kind of alleviate some of that sibilance. The only issue is, like I said, it causes the clarity of the audio to kind of diminish. This is actually much like what a chaotic eyeball does to a microphone. So I already did a video about this, but I'm thinking about doing another video on this channel about what the chaotic eyeball and microphone shields do to negatively affect the audio. They weren't made for voice actors. They were really made for other uses, but if you are a voice actor, I would never use a microphone shield, a chaotic eyeball, any kind of box that goes around your head or around the microphone. So if you are interested, let me know in the comments and I will put that on my list of videos to make. Some other reasons I don't like pop filters is, well, one, they just get in the way. Is your pop filter always getting in the way? Does it make it difficult just to open your refrigerator? It can even be a hassle to simply brush your teeth. If you're a voice actor, a pop filter can just kind of get in the way. So you'll have copy in front of you that you need to read from for an audition or for a book job. And the pop filter, it can be pretty big and bulky depending on which one you use. And it can get in the way of you reading the copy. But also, what it can do is it can kind of throw voice actors into a performance. So this usually happens if you're a beginner voice actor, but what'll happen is you get in front of the microphone and you see the microphone, but you also see the pop filter and subconsciously it throws you into a performance. Instead of you talking like you're having a conversation with a friend, which is normally what they want these days. They want it to be what they call dinner table talk, where how would you talk to your friend across the dinner table? Much like I'm talking to you right now in this video. It's not projected, it's not forced. I'm just having a conversation with you. But in a lot of cases, voice actors will get in front of the microphone, they'll see the pop filter, and just subconsciously, it'll make them start projecting and talking like an announcer, and they'll start reading the copy like this. And that's not what they want these days. That used to be the case, but these days they want it to be conversational, unless they otherwise specify, which doesn't happen a ton. It does, but not a lot. By the way, I'm fighting a cold right now, so please ignore <clears throat> my voice. Okay, so now that you know what a pop filter is and then some of the negative effects that can be caused by them and why I hate them, let's talk about how you can completely ditch them just by using proper microphone technique. So you can see how the microphones are positioned right now. Now, of course, in most videos, I would want the microphone completely off camera, or maybe I would just have one microphone in frame with me. But for this video, I wanted to show you on two types of microphone, a shotgun microphone and a large diaphragm condenser microphone. So you can see how they're positioned. All right, I'm not, I'm not right in front of the microphone like that. You know, you couldn't see me if I was, but there's also a reason for this other than the fact that you wouldn't be able to see my face. I'll use photography as my example. So if you're a photographer and you need to get the subject's face in focus, you don't have to be standing right in front of them in order to do this. You can be off to the side, you can be above them, you can be below them, it doesn't matter. You can still focus on their face or more specifically on their eye. And this is much like a microphone and your mouth. I don't need to be directly in front of a microphone for that microphone 
to be in focus on my mouth, right? My mouth needs to be in focus, much like a person's face or eye in a photo. So for example, in most cases, if you were to go into a studio, this is 99.9% .9 of the time what they're gonna do. They're gonna have the microphone kind of up above you, angled down and a little off to the side. But the thing is, the microphone is still pointed directly at your mouth. So if I were to tie a string from the end of the shotgun microphone, to my mouth, it would be in focus. Same with this large diaphragm condenser microphone. So there's still clarity in the audio. I'm still in focus. I don't have to be right in front of the microphone where if I were to say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, every single one of those is popping the microphone. Whereas if I'm where I'm at now and I say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, well, I need to practice that. But you can see the difference. Those were not gusting into the microphone like it was if I were to get right in front of it and say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You get the idea. Now, this technique is more so for voice actors, right? Because the whole idea is you want to be about six-ish inches away from the microphone and you will have the microphone angled up and then down a little bit or, or you'll have it above you and angled down a little bit but still pointed to your mouth. But in a YouTube video or something like that, I'll have this shotgun microphone off camera above me and pointed down at my mouth because shotgun microphones were actually designed to capture audio at a greater distance than large diaphragm condenser microphones. If I were to use this large diaphragm condenser microphone in my videos, I would actually have it probably around where it's at now, maybe a little further away, maybe a little more off to the side, you know, so it's not quite as in my face, maybe even down here and pointed up. I typically don't like to have the microphone down here and pointed up because it kind of captures too much mouth noise and nasal sounds. Like you don't really want to have it pointed like up at your nose or up at your mouth. You just get some of that. Ugh, I don't like that. But you get some more of that noise if you do that in some cases. So I typically like to have it above me, angled down, and like I said, a little off to the side. And honestly, that's all there is to it. That's how you can get away with not using a pop filter. And you just, it, it, I don't know, it makes me and a lot of other people feel like they have so much more room to move around and use their hands. Because in voice acting, we use our hands to help us get into emotions. I mean, we do in real life all the time. I'm a very animated person when I talk. I use my hands all the time, as you know from these videos. But in voice acting, we do the same thing. We need to get mad. We might need to use our hands. You know, whatever it is, you don't want to be smacking your pop filter around and causing issues, especially if you're in the middle of a live session on Source Connect or something like that. So that's really all there is to it. Okay, now take your pop filter out to a nice steak dinner. Let it down gently. Remember to be firm, but to let it know, it's not you, it's me. I've grown a lot in the time we've spent together, okay? I've really, I really worked on myself and my microphone technique, and you were great, you really were, but it's just, it's time for me to spread my wings and fly. You know, I, I've gotta, I've gotta let all these childish inhibitions go. And I've gotta grow into the person I was always meant to be, a professional. All right, I'm just kidding. If you want to keep your pop filter, that's totally fine. I just wanted to make a video showing you how you could get rid of it if you wanted to. But if you're one of those people that likes pop filters and you want to keep yours, just remember. You know what they say. Do you need to set up your home studio but have no idea where to begin? Or does your audio sound a bit off and you'd like a professional to take a listen to it and diagnose the problem? Whatever the case, I got you covered. You can sign up for a private consultation with me and we can cover whatever issues you're having. You can check out whatever I have scrolling across the screen right now or you can just go to my website and see what I offer. You can find the link in the description and as always, thank you so much for watching, but more importantly, you know what they say.